A new glasses-free 3D monitor from Acer Spatial Labs. The setup is very straightforward and ready to go. Removing the screen protector, flipping out the stand, and plugging it in. Now, just to address the elephant in the room, no, it does not accept frame packed 3D. Here, I plugged it into my 4K 3D Blu ray player, and of course, the 4K disc plays just fine. But the 3D disc gives that disappointing message that a 3D display is required. This is very similar to the foolish decision Voodoo made disabling their 3D streaming on most 3D capable displays. This also means that using the monitor to edit 3D footage using PowerDirector is out of the question, unless of course you use Anaglyph. But moving on, before using the monitor's other 3D capabilities, you need to go to the Spatial Labs website and download their Experience Center software. You'll then go through a brief setup. Now when it comes to viewing 3D video, half width side by side is the format that's supported. There's a feature very similar to the so-called 3D service app on the Rocket phones, a small widget that activates SBS viewing, in this case marked Go. The difference here is this widget is picky. It requires the video player to be full screen. With the stock video player installed on Windows, I couldn't use it because every time I went full screen, the widget disappeared. It did, however, work with SBS video on YouTube. Now something you'll notice right away is the on-screen controls are stretched and overlapped in 3D mode, only showing half in each eye. This is uncomfortable to look at, yet a familiar sight to anyone who's used SBS mode on a 3D TV before, and it's an unavoidable side effect of YouTube's interface not being designed for SBS 3D. If you look now, you'll also start noticing periodic jerky waves and wiggles in the image. What you're seeing is eye tracking in action. Changing the stereo video to different viewpoints on the monitor to match the movement of my head. Reading the sales pitch, you would think the 3D is new and improved, but for me, I found you still have to deal with sweet spots, ghosting, noticeably low resolution, and jerky head tracking transitions. And you'd be excused for thinking this device came out a decade ago. You can also convert 2D to 3D on the fly, but it doesn't hold a candle to Leia's conversion algorithms as found in the loom pad. And it's riddled with eye searing artifacts and stuttering, making it virtually unusable. There's also the model viewer program enabling you to check out 3D models in stereo, as well as True Game for playing select games in 3D. Maybe if you're a gamer, it would be worth it to you to try it out as a toy for that purpose, but if your main thing is 3D video or photography, I see absolutely no benefit to this monitor, especially at over $1,000. You'll get far better visual quality, easy compatibility, and all at a much lower price by just 
buying a used 3D TV and using it as a monitor? Will the other glasses-free 3D monitors and screens coming out this year do any better? We'll have to wait and see.